Good evening, everybody, and thank you for attending. Uh, this is, well, audit and governance. Uh, any apologies at you? We have apologies from Councillor Kingston and apologies from Councillor Kingston and we've been notified that Councillor Daniels may be a little late but is okay. on her way. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is to move the minutes from our previous meeting. Happy to move Mr Chairman. Right, our next item is to any declare any interest. Not interested. <laughs> <laughs> Move swiftly on through this agenda. Our next item is our slavery statement. Thank you, Chair. The um, next, the, the update report today is the uh, the asked the audit and grant audit and governance committee to endorse the council's modern slavery and human trafficking statement 2021-22. The Modern Slavery and Human Trafficking Statement is a requirement under the Modern Slavery Act. Have I done something wrong? <laughs> Modern Slavery Act 2015. Um, that we need every year as an organisation, as a global turnover of above £36 million to publish a slavery and human trafficking statement. Move that. Okay. Was it my computer, no? <laughs> Shall we pause? Right, uh, we pause the meeting just to correct a few technical issues. It should be okay now. Over to you. Thank you. Yep, yeah, as the um, report um, is asking the, the Audit and Governance Committee to endorse the Modern Slavery um, and Human Trafficking Statement for 2021 22, it's a requirement under the Act to have a statement within six months of the end of the financial year. Um, the statement outlines the um, um, last year and activities under that um, criteria of modern slavery, some updates to our human resources policies and actions around training and um, for, for staff and also the update that our um, procurement chains are resourced appropriately and actually do the appropriate checks for the modern slavery chain. There is also in there an action for the following year, so i.e. this year, of where we're continuing to work to look at all aspects of modern slavery, including um, increased um, attendance through the police tactical group on modern slavery and continuing to work in partnership. The, there are no, at this time, any um, referrals into the Tamworth Vulnerability Partnership for anybody involved in modern slavery. Um, however, all SNAF have, have had have training within their safeguarding 
and is, as necessary we can actually update and refer people into the national referral mechanism. So the statement is attached as the appendices to the report and it, as I say the action is for the committee to endorse for approval by cabinet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, nice piece of work, well done. Good to see that we're on, on schedule with these things. Uh, it's <coughs> my pleasure to actually ask it to be moved. Anybody, anybody got any questions? Well, I don't think anybody's going to sit here tonight and say they're pro-slavery, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't think that's going to happen. Uh, just obviously thank Joe for the continuing work on this. It is an incredibly important area for the council to be involved in. You'd think it's not an issue in the 21st century town yeah. like Tamworth, but actually it informs a lot of our policies when dealing with travelling communities. Obviously we've got refugees currently at the Holiday Inn, so these policies are actually quite important that we do maintain and monitor and work with partners to ensure we do it. So I'm more than happy to move windows, Mr Chairman. All those in favour? I'll second that. Oh, well, then you can see. Our next item on the agenda is the risk assessment quarterly update. Oh, no, hang on, local government first. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so the purpose of my report today is to advise committee of the contents of the local government and social care ombudsman annual letter for the year 31st of March, and that ended in 31st of March in relation to the complaints that have been made against Tamworth Borough Council. So, as committee will probably be aware, the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman produces an annual letter which is sent to us every July, covering the um, previous financial year. Um, in the year that's covered by this letter, the Ombudsman received eight inquiries and about our authority and made 10 reported decisions. The reason for more decisions than inquiries is because two were residual from the previous year. The report lays out where the um, complaints were received and those complaints are then assessed by an ombudsman um, to make an initial judgment on the case and they will then um, contact the council if they want to ask for any more information before they go for further investigation. So of the 10 decisions that were made this year, five inquiries were referred back to the council. Three complaints were closed after initial inquiries because it may be the law states that the ombudsman is not allowed to investigate it or it might not be an effective use of funds. That left two complaints, which were passed on for detailed investigation. One was not held after full investigation, and this was due to a, um, a small business grant that the council had refused because the essential criteria wasn't um, in place to enable payment to be made. Um, and the full report, um, anonymised report from the Ombudsman is at Appendix 3. The final decision was upheld by the Ombudsman and this was re um, with respect to a letter that was sent to a customer uh, regarding electoral registration. There was a word on the letter that said will, um, that the customer would not be able to get credit, for example, or apply for a mortgage. Um, they the customer complained it was untrue. <clears throat> um, so through our complaints process, we accepted that the word will was too strong and apology was offered and we changed it to may. The only thing that the customer could not do um, necessarily with, um, without um, going on to the electoral register is actually vote. Um, it didn't mean to say they were excluded from the other, although they may be excluded. So when the Ombudsman um, uh, considered the complaint, we had already um, um, made a decision and had apologised and um, they decided not to investigate any form further, although they report that as an upheld um, complaint. Um, it, the report also um, reports on the number of complaints as a, um, upheld as a percentage of detailed investigations, and because we only had two detailed investigations, it comes as 50% upheld and 50% not upheld. Um, the, they also report on compliance with recommendations, however there was no recommendations made for us to comply with. And finally, the Ombudsman um, reports on the percentage of upheld case which were uh, a satisfactory remedy, remedy was provided before the complaint reached the Ombudsman, of which we got 100% because we had 
um, issued that remedy. So the report seeks, um, is asking that the committee endorse the contents of the annual review letter and that they note the summary of complaints, decisions and compliance during the financial year. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yes, it's good to, you know, we have checks and balances on all what we do and that the Ombudsman has found 50-50 really, but that's, you know, like you say, wording. Uh, so anyway, it gives me pleasure. Is there any questions? Councillor Cook. Uh, not really a question, because I think the introductions answered the question uh, I had. Uh, just to say, obviously, we've got 76,500 citizens. By the time yes. you remove children, we've got, what, 55, 56,000 people, eight complaints. Yeah. It's a grand scheme of things. Well done, guys. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah I, I had a little bit of a concern, but you've raised it in your introduction about how we, we put, you know, you can't get credit or a mortgage unless you register a vote. It was a silly comment, to be honest. But like myself and Andrew have always said, we're a learning council. If it's been fixed, my question's gone. So happy to endorse that is what it is and congratulate our wonderful staff. If, like I say, out of 55,000 adults in town, we're only eight complaints all year to the Ombudsman. <laughs> that ain't bad. Thank you, Councillor. Sick. Second that? Did you? Okay. Right, I'll move that and all those in favour. Thank you for your hard work. So this is the regular quarterly risk management update for the committee for quarter two of the 22-23 financial year. A copy of the current corporate risk register is attached to the report as Appendix 1. The risk control measures included under each corporate risk heading have been developed to reflect the actions on the 2225 corporate plan to ensure the delivery of strategic objectives. The nature of some actions contained within the corporate plan means that they are identified as tasks rather than risk controls. These items are not included in the risk register but will be monitored by other risk control measures such as service plans and budget management. Others are by their nature risk control and so can be included directly as a risk control measure. To clarify this, a summary of these are shown in Appendix 2. The Operational Risk Champions Group have met to discuss cross-service risks and concerns around increased costs and supply shortages, including of skilled workers, with inflation expected to continue to increase in the short term. Recent turmoil in financial markets following the mini-budget in September is likely to mean further interest rate increases, again having an impact on the price of goods and services, mortgage costs and on households' disposable income. This in turn may have an impact on collection rates for council tax and housing rents, for example, which will continue to be monitored through the monthly budget monitoring process. Publication of information from the national grid also identifies a possibility of power cuts during the winter period. Current indications are that these will be localised and for periods of three hours. There is limited information at this time, but discussions are being held with the Business Continuity Group and with the Civil Contingencies Unit to ensure we identify areas of vulnerability and prioritise accordingly. Um, the committee is asked to endorse the contents of the report. Thank you for that. Uh, any questions? Yeah, thank you, and thank you for that introduction. A uh, couple of comments on the introduction. It's, it's my understanding through some of the sources I work in, because obviously I work in global trade. It's actually rolling blackouts are potentially in isolated areas in this country this year. But actually, the bigger danger is next winter, because we've actually got very full supplies at the minute, but we're not getting resupplied as such, but it's getting the new supplies of the gas through next year. So it's next year, my But I think you're absolutely right to raise the issue with interest rates. But perversely with these things, it's always, you know, good and bad. Obviously, we know people are going to be affected, mortgages are going to be affected, and people are going to start to struggle in many ways because of the spike in inflation and interest rates. Hence my drive on Tuesday to completely, not completely, but partially alter the council's vision to take more account of the world we're living in right now where people are going to start to struggle. But on the, you know, the adverse side, when Stefan's playing with his tre treasury management, interest rates going up are a good thing because actually then the council is making more income. So mm -hmm. it's almost rough with smooth. People are going to be hurt, but the council might be perversely in a better financial position through the higher interest rates to be able to help those people if we target that support correctly. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of rough with smooth. Um, the only thing I wanted to raise, Mr Chairman, with your uh, permission is 
obviously I raised it in June and the report does reflect I raised it in June. Uh, the severity level of um, you know commercialization was increased after I had a little debate in June, Stefan. Obviously, the only thing I would raise, and I don't think it can be solved by debating this evening, but just to put it on radar again, you know, it, it still gets me a little bit that our commercialisation has not moved from original to where we are today. It's still in the same box on severity and you know impact. So, I'd just like to see at some point a, a, that that stat move somewhere to get us to more towards commercialisation. Now, obviously, in defence of officers and councillors, we've had COVID in the middle of this and a lot of challenges. But you know, we really would like to see our commercialisation agenda really to take off now because from a budget perspective we know there's a big hole and it's one of the key strands we need so if we can put any sort of pressure on from collectively councillors and officers to take some ownership and really start driving income up where we can and obviously deliver better services alongside it while we're going to have budget constraints i'd be grateful to see it if that's possible thank you i'm happy to move the report if that's what you needed as well mr chairman Thank you, Councillor Cook. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right, it's the yin and the yang, you know. Good interest rates mean we get more revenue in one respect, but on the other hand, the cost to the council. So the expenditure will rise accordingly. Um, and, and it's good to note that going forward, this is something we need to be aware of. And I'm, I'm sure, and I know speaking with Stefan and the team, it's, it's, it's in everybody's agenda at the moment. Oh, so, yeah, so thanks for that. Uh, I'm now looking for it to be moved. and. Well, seconded first. All those in favour? Thank you. We now move swiftly on to item seven, which is our quarterly internal audit progress report. And we, we're very fortunate tonight. It's, it's in the hands of our CEO. I, I wouldn't say fortunate. Um, yes, I mean, firstly, just for, for noting um, apologies from, um, from Andrew Wood, our audit manager, who's uh, on some planned leave before the meeting schedule was set, was set up and deserved leave as well, I, I, I hasten to add. Um, but he's uh, given me um, a good briefing on, on the report. So uh, if we can start off, um, this is obviously the quarter two um, status of uh, our annual audit plan. Um, members will note we are slightly behind um, planned activity at the moment, completing 28% as opposed to 39%. Uh, however, in the interim period, as reported at the last committee, um, we have procured the services of uh, BDO, who are an external general auditor um, organisation, um, and they've provided additional resource, which has given us comfort that uh, we will be able to catch up and um, achieve the audit plan by, uh, by the financial year end. Within the actual auditor KPI, um, there's two indicators which are below target, um, one of which is 25% um, of the draft reports being issued in six weeks, which is, um, is behind plan. Um, however, that is in train and the audit manager is um, obviously conscious of that and will uh, work to improve that towards the end of the year. And the second one that is behind plan is um, the closure meetings which are held with, with the managers. Um, only 50% of those have been done within five days of the, um, of the audit being, uh, being completed. Uh, neither of those indicators are material to the effectiveness of, of the audit. Uh, I think it's worth saying they are internal um, KPIs. But um, with the introduction of the new contractor, um, Andrew is confident that this position will, um, will improve. The quarterly report on, um, on, on actual audits taken, uh, I think members will note there's been a, um, a slight increase of the number of outstanding audit recommendations. And as, as at when this report was produced, um, there were 13 overdue high priority recommendations. However, after um, a follow-up, five of those have been completed since this report was compiled on the 30th of September. So that leaves eight, um, which are uh, now being proactively managed with the relevant assistant directors to ensure that um, they are um, uh, the actions are carried out in a timely fashion or planned where they've proven to be more difficult um, to, to achieve. Uh, there is nothing in there that is material or legal to the operation of the organisation, um, which is of comfort. Uh, and finally, um, the audit team, and particularly the audit manager, will be going through his own um, uh, public sector internal audit standard compliance. Uh, this is going to be carried out in quarter three. 
um, and will become the, the report will be coming to this committee in February next year to allow uh, for any um, implementation of any recommendations that come out of that in the, the, the following year. So happily try and answer any questions that the committee have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Uh, any questions? Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, just with the ones that are overdue, um, are any of those repeat offenders? Have they cropped up before in any other audits that we thought we fixed and they've come up before? No, Chair. I mean, I, I can. I can. I've got detail of those here. Um, we have one within our licensing area, which is around um, making sure that any um, any documentation stored is in um, is is dispose of in a timely fashion in accordance with our retention policy. Um, it was classed as a high priority, um, but it's, um, it, it, it is in train at this moment in time. Um, our Pentana performance reporting system, there is the contract register that needs to be updated and cleaned up and procurement training arranged. That is ongoing and um, actually in hand as we, as we speak. There are two within the data protection team, which are, um, they've effectively stalled. We, we had a, um, a couple of vacancies and uh, a, a bout of sickness within that particular team. Um, actually, you know, it's quite difficult to recruit into that specialised skill. So those have uh, effectively been put on hold. They are not material, but clearly they're, they're, they're on radar and are being picked up at this moment in time. And the final one is within the housing repairs team, which is a review of KPIs being undertaken. And in fairness, I think that's probably been superseded um, on the basis of the, um, the, 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 the housing inspection that's planned for next year. Uh, there may be a very different suite of KPIs needed to satisfy that requirement. Um, but again, that's, that work is, is, is in hand. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, that, um, it's good to see that the the low on the graph, the low recs have for the first time swapped with the high recs, as in uh, the, the the amount. But that's good to see. But um, medium recs do seem to bob along at that constant sort of forty to fifty level. So, um, is there any is 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 there a bit of an action plan there to to start driving those medium recs down? I think there's always an action plan because when they when they, they come up, they're, they're different areas, so there's no trends. Um, if we were auditing the same service at the same time every year, we could pick a trend up to see whether there's similar levels of medium actions coming out because it's done on a rolling program across probably three, four years across the whole organisation. It's very difficult to get any, um, any sort of consistent trends from it, but there are no... Um, sort of consistent areas of similarity. Um, quite, quite often, um, particularly in things like perhaps housing repairs, where it's high volume, um, high spend, there may be some similarities come, but they get, they get refined into, into processes um, within, within the teams. So I suppose clumsily saying, do we act on audit recommendations? Yes, we do. We don't just address the, um, the concerns raised. Um, but they will always, I think the medium recs will always be the high one. Um, you know, high recommendations, if they are truly high, they are dealt with because that's a, you know, it's a matter of life priority. and death or priority or legality. Mm -hmm. So that they will always take, take preference. Um. Thank you. Um, the, so the, the second question I was going to ask, that takes me quite nicely onto the second question. Um, you, 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 when you lay in reference to the high recs, you said that um, that they were not really immaterial, so you were worried about them. But they're high recs. So my question is: Are we either a being too onerous with our high recommendations? Are we, are we saying right that's high and putting it as high? Should they be medium recommendations if they're immaterial and there's no there's no great rush? There's no you know if there's no sort of safety issue or real sort of corporate stress or anything like that, should they be high? And and B, um, if if they shouldn't be be high, then should we be putting more onerous? You know, should be should be be focusing on them? Are they truly immaterial? 
Yeah, it's a, a really good question, and it's one we we actually debate as a as a, a management team quite quite regularly. Um, I think there is a lot of learning um, within the uh, sort of the, the the lower tiers of the management team that an audit recommendation is a recommendation, and when they're presented with their report that this is a high recommendation that needs to be completed by next week, rather than saying yes, it should be, they should say well actually. We need to do this, 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 and this, and plan for it. And that may mean it's a six months program. It might mean it can be, you know, it's a tick in the box and it's done. And I think that's the reason why there are some, you know, when I say, you know, you know we are not concerned about them because they're not, they're not material or, or legal. Um, they can still be a high recommendation, you know, a high priority. But had had the um, the, the, the sort of responsible manager said, actually, it's you know, it's not life and death. We can give that. We can give that six months. It actually wouldn't be an overdue. Chances are it would be completed by the time. So I think there's, there's, there's learning in that respect from it. That answers the question. Thank you. No, usually is the case that people get given an action and they, with all the best will in the world, they go right. I'm going to do that. But then they don't actually take full stock of how much it takes to close that action down properly, and then probably the back end of getting it closed down, the authority and everything else. So yeah, absolutely. I, I, I did think it was it was that. The 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 last comment I was going to make was um, thanks for uh, letting us know about the uh, the external resource you're going to bring in. I think my biggest criticism of um, TBC's audit process and assurance has been that they don't tr truly align with the three levels of assurance, the, th the lines of defence. I think line the first line which is internal yes absolutely i think the third line which is completely external yes absolutely we have an external team coming i've always held an opinion that you blur the lines at the second line um, external to the teams but internal to the organization which is usually second line of defense uh, but you've you've ticked that box with the extra resource coming in so that's that's great thank you come back on that chair it, it was purposeful because you're absolutely right, it gives. Uh, it also gives the internal teams chance to learn from um, industry practice as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good blend of skills to have. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Turn my phone back on. Uh, yeah, the only point I would make is obviously uh, when you get onto the um, summary of internal audit work undertaken. I'll give you a perfect example. Third one down. Risk-based review of housing rent system to ensure correct rent charge payments recorded, rent accounting systems are accurate, and control in place for setting up uh, rent debit. When I go across to the assurance summary, it's blank. And there's a lot in there that's blank. And I, I just, I never understand reports where things are left blank. Because it, it's not really telling me anything from that point. I mean, do, do we have an assurance? Do we have a plan? Do we have a policy? Do, do we have an action we need to take? I just, I'm never comfortable with blanks. That's, that's actually for quarter three, so it hasn't happened yet. So it's it's there's there's um, if if you look at the um, your core financial systems, uh, first one's council tax. Indicative quarter was was quarter two. It's been allocated, um, but it hasn't been scoped or briefing meetings yet. So that so it hasn't so it hasn't happened yet. Um, payroll is quarter three. That's been allocated to BDO. Um, who are the, the external organisation with scoping and briefing meetings to be held. The housing rents hasn't been allocated yet, but that's due for quarter three, so it will be allocated. So it's really, that's, that's um, uh, it's a forward plan as well as um, what's happened. Okay. Thank you, Mr Barrett. I'm comfortable. Thank you for that. That's uh, a bit more clarity and we're all wiser. Uh, right, I, um, I'd like to move that report. Uh, somebody second it? Thank you. Uh, and all those in favour? I'll say the rest of that, yes. Uh, I've said it in meetings after meetings after meetings for years, I will never go to a report that hasn't been noticed. So you go to a report, go to the minutes. I've not gone to the same confirm on the minutes. <laughs> That's a confidence report. Well, I think we've uh, mentioned that before that we'd like the, you know, the reports to be, and they were issued, and you know, it's up to us to find the time to read them, really, isn't it? Already. And next item is. Oh, 
Yeah. Fraud at date. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, this, this is um, a, a big piece, big piece of constant work that sort of happens in the background. Um, it's our, our, our sort of six monthly counter fraud update, but it also uh, in, encloses as appendices the updated counter fraud and corruption strategy, whistleblowing policy and the um, anti money laundering policy. Uh, firstly, um, I would just like to point out in recommendation four, uh, members will have noticed that recommendation three and four are the same. Recommendation four should be to endorse the refreshed anti-money laundering <laughs> policy um, contained at appendix five. Um, the, all of the, the, the policies and strategies contained in here, uh, they've been amended for personnel changes and um, typos. There's been no fundamental changes in the, uh, in the meaning of the policy. Um, but for, for ease, any changes have been highlighted in, in the report. Um, as far as the, 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 the important bit, which is a counter-fraud update, um, the, the team have continued to work very proactively in, uh, in all, all areas of counter-fraud in the first half of the year. Um, they've worked on a number of areas, um, including the, the energy rebate grants and providing the, um, the grant and post-payment assurance for the, the numerous business grants that we, we've had over the, um, the, the time, the Protect and Vaccinate uh, grants and the Rough Sleeper initiative. Uh, they're also still part of the Cabinet Office's uh, National Fraud Initiative data matching exercise, um, and there's uh, a table um, in, in the report that sort of shows uh, where, what we've done and where we've done that as, as part of that. So the, the NFI um, for, for, for members ease um, really looks at council tax single person discount, council tax reduction, electoral register, payroll data, housing tenants data, trade creditors and taxi driver licensing. Um, so the data downloads for those are currently progressing and they will be submitted um, within the data submission window which ends on the 18th of November this year. Um, if we look at the, the table of um, sort of activity, um, he says when he can find his page. Thank you, Stefan. There has been um, a, a notional saving of £10,120 identified by the team um, across a, a variety of, uh, of areas that the fraud team look at. So it just shows that you know they are actually delivering um, uh, a diff you know, another set of assurance to the organisation for the uh, some of the statutory things it um, it does. Um, and I say I'll try and take any questions that arise from from committee with that. Any questions, Councillor Cook? I'm hoping Mr. Barrett can help me with this one because I'm going to admit I'm not an expert in this area, so I just want to understand it. It's probably a very logical explanation, and yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't understand fraud at all. Um, obviously, on the table which you just referenced, the ten thousand one hundred and twenty, um, like you say, council tax, council tax discount, tax license, etc. Uh, National fraud investigation, SPD check, NFI data set, followed by NFI other data set and NFI spot checks. Number of cases investigated, 291, 49, and 1,036. Number of cases proven are all zero. That's a lot of investigations to, to, to a layman to see, to go, actually, are the people of Tamworth really that fundamentally honest? Or can you just make me understand it a little bit more? Yeah, that, that, absolutely right. No, that is not fraud cases. That is investigation checks. So um, particularly with the, the, um, the spotlight checks, predominantly around business grants and other grants, there's been... Um, a thousand and whatever it is, checks carried out. So um, A matches A. So there's no fraud. So it's a zero in all the, all of those yeah, cases. Yeah, and yeah, and uh, it's, it's where there is a, a number of proven cases. That's where there has been um, fraud identified and action taken and recovery action taken. So uh, yeah, it's, a zero is good. Um, but I think it just shows the level of checks that have been carried out. And particularly with the volume of additional grants that's been been given out you know, for, through government to, to us, which I think I sort of identifies the increase in workload, both for the um, sort of the the, the the finance team and also the um, the, the, the fraud team as well, um, because you know a, th a thousand checks is, is a, as you say it's a lot of checks. Um, 
So it just shows the, the volume of grants that have gone out through the door as well. Any more questions? I've got to reset to default settings, exit. Thank you, Councillor Ford. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's a vocabulary question, sorry. I'm looking on page 98, um, point six point three, I believe, and it mentions the word tip-off and how information has come to the Council through those. I'm just intrigued as to kind of what they are and kind of what our ethos is about that. Is that kind of thing that we encourage or is it more that we would encourage kind of coming to us if necessary, if support is needed, if, say, someone hasn't kind of paid what was correct, as it were? It's difficult to answer, to be, to be quite honest with you, Councillor Daniels, because if there is a valid um, rationale for somebody making a phone call, coming and seeing a senior officer um, with a, a concern, of course it gets taken very seriously. And of course it is, it is a tip off. Mm -hmm. um, what we don't do is immediately go out, you know, sort of with arms waving, there's massive fraud. <coughs> we take it as, thank you very much for that. Um, and it gets investigated. Quite often it's, it's absolutely nothing. Occasionally it may be something. Um, we have various, methodologies i mean we, we do have a very robust whistleblowing policy in the organization which is sub obviously subject to a separate policy but feeds into this whereas if somebody you know an internal member makes a complaint it is um it's investigated and and actioned um if somebody external to the organization um says something of course we're going to investigate it um it's a very very sensitive area for all this um and it's something that we take very seriously but we also make sure we do the investigation correctly yes. to make sure it is or isn't um, fraud because you know potentially there are legal implications and, and that sort of thing with it as well. So. Now that answers my question and you can see from this it is a very transparent process so thank you. Yeah I'd just like to say that's 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 good to hear that we should really encourage whistleblowers because that's part of the, the opportunity for all of us to keep fraud down and you, you know you, you Dealing with it sensitively and cautiously and correctly is, is, is always good for everybody. Just out of curiosity, and the officer don't have to answer this, do we still get the same letter from a Glasgow resident every year accusing Mr Garner of fraudulently demanding council tax? <laughs> I'd have to say that's restricted information, Chair, and I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> What's council tax? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for that update. Uh, yes, I mean some of these things are, you know, sensitive, and we have to be careful. And it's good to see that we're, you know, listening and learning and doing the right thing. Uh, so, with further ado, uh, no more questions. Proposed and seconded. Articles without going to move that. All those in favour? Well, swiftly moving on to our agenda for the next year, the Audit and Governance Timetable. Right, well, you'll all be aware that we've... Uh, recently met and uh, put this spreadsheet together to try and ease the workflow and make it more um, manageable and uh, uh, I'd like to thank you guys for doing that. It's, it's, I find it, you know, this is our third meeting now, we do seem to be more efficient, more effective, uh, so thanks very much. Um, you are uh, aware that um, our next meeting is on the 15th of um, November and there are well, external uh, Conversations with Grant Thornton on those. Um, so it looks like a very nice evening, actually, not too too much. But it's uh, so all those uh, be prepared to read the reports as and when they come out. So.
Yes, moving swiftly on. Um, proposed and second. Any questions? No. Right. We'll move the schedule to the next meeting and time to close the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for your hard work. It's appreciated. <laughs>